All right, guys, little update for you. We left Eagle this morning. Uh, we had planned to fish like a half a day and then leave Scotts, but it was super, super windy this morning, like 20 miles an hour. And we just decided not to fish in it. So uh, we left about nine o'clock this morning, packed up the car, headed back to Jesse's home lake, Clearwater, and uh, got the boat all packed up, got to the cabin, unloaded everything, took a little nap. And uh, Jesse just wanted to call it a night or hang out for the night. And I wanted to go fishing, uh, so I'm out here by myself, and I already got one in the bag. So uh, I'll show you guys the fight real quick, and then I'll show you the fish. So check it out. It's actually like super nice out. Uh, I didn't want to dig out all my warm clothes, so I literally just have on a pair of sweatpants and a sweatshirt and just threw my, my challenger suit on to stay warm. But I'll show you guys the fish, the bait, and uh, wow, this is really cool. All right, here's a 13 inch grandma, mother of pearl pattern. There's a beautiful Clearwater Lake muskie. Clearwater Lake, Ontario, not Manitoba. Very cool fish. Gonna get her out and release her. See if we can get another one. <laughs> There's the fish. Wow. <laughs> That's cool. I don't have a bump board or anything, but I guess she's 43 to 44 inches. T-boned that grandma. I'll show you in the mother of pearl pattern. Wow, what a cool fish. Exploring a new lake, using an auto chart. I actually ran over this hump when I was coming up to visit Jesse this summer. It came from 40 feet of water all the way to 10 and uh, threw a waypoint on it, came back, auto chartered it a little bit, and I was just going around the edge, and I heard the magic zzz, it was game on, sweet. Let's see if we can get another one, because we got a major right at sunset tonight. As you can see, the reason why it's called Clearwater Lake, this is the access lake into Pipestone, gin clear water, big fat muskies. <laughs> Love it. All right guys, so, Setup. It's kind of hard to do this. It's hard to do this solo. I didn't really plan on fishing alone. But uh, anyway, here's a bait. 13 inch grandma, the mother of pearl. Got a 175 pound liters and lures fluorocarbon leader, nine foot St. Croix Mojo musky rod, and a Daiwa Saltis line counter trolling reel. So over here. We've got a bolt-on salty rod holder. We have a Hummingbird Helix 10 with auto chart. So this lake that we're on right now uh, is not charted. There's no map of it. There's, you know, nobody really knows what's here. I shouldn't say don't know what's here. Nobody has a map of this lake. There's no contour map. So you literally come out here and you know where nothing is. And instead of laying down a bunch of waypoints, what Hummingbird allows you to do is take your Helix units and you can go into menu you're gonna go over to the little hummingbird icon, auto chart live, okay? You go over and you can record on or off, and then these are all your other different options. So when I record on, it's taking all this just flat white screen, which is water, and it's making its own map, okay? And all you need to do is just insert one card in here, your auto chip, your auto chart card. Is this one right here, okay? Auto chart. You can graph on a single chip for basically a whole lifetime. I run this thing every single day and guiding the last three years uh, and I've yet to even come close to filling it. So 
as you can see, it's just a big blank screen, okay? There's nothing there. All that information is on this chip. So as soon as I re-enter it into my graph, boot up, auto chart lines is selected, save location, yes. Now, all this information comes back up. So I'm gonna get out of this screen and I'll show you guys what I was fishing. So if we zoom out, okay, there's literally, like I say, nothing here, okay? It's all just blank. The only lines you see there's when I was auto charting prior. So these two lines here from when I came up in the summer and fished with Jesse and I ran over this hump. It's right here. See how it comes up to 10 foot? Okay. We got 47 feet of water here and all of a sudden it came up to 10. I ran over. It's like, whoa, that's not marked. It kind of scares you. But it's like, oh, that's a nice piece of structure. So I came down, ran a little stretch of islands. I found some other points, extended points. And I took this line out off this stretch of islands and I came out right there. And this is this line here. I came out, found the edge of this hump. As you can see here, and it started making its own map of where I was. I came up a little shallow there. I started to turn the corner, because so I lost it all of a sudden. So I'm turning, trying to find it, and the rod went off right where this waypoint is. Okay, and now since so, we've drifted over the top of the spot, film and whatnot. But I'm just gonna get right back on the same line and figure out how far this thing really goes. If it's connected to this island over here at all, or if it's just an isolated hump all by itself. So we're gonna throw the rod back in the rod holder and try and get another fish before sunset. All right, you guys can see I'm hovering around that 3.5 number. I'm gonna get back on my track. I'm gonna tighten this knob right here that allows my tiller to, to keep it at a steady RPM. And watch this rod bounce. I've got the rod tip pretty close to the water, uh, just so it's the most accurate reading as possible. You don't want your rod tip up high and a bunch of line out before your line's actually in the water for your dive curve, your bait. So we're gonna run back over and you guys can see I hit a little point right here before. Okay, see how that came up? I'm gonna stay outside of that. And you can watch how this auto chart works. You see this white's just gonna get gonna get start to fill in with the information that this graph is is taking in. So it's staying deep, it's moving this contour a little bit tighter to this point. And the more times you go over the spot, the more times it'll correct itself and really fine tune your draft. Especially on these Canadian Shield Lakes where everything is so steep, you really have to go over, over your spots quite a few times to get where you need to be. As far as my drag, I don't have it too tight. Um, I can pull it out pretty easy with my hand. Turn my clicker back on. Okay, nothing too crazy, nothing too tight. Um, but you know, have someone grab the line on the other end and then pull on that rod. You, know, you always want to check your, your drag from the, your rod tip. Your rod absorbs a lot of that power, a lot of that hook set. So we're going to go back out to our graph and get back out on this hump out here. And running a tiller like this is so nice because all my movements are so fast. It's not like a steering wheel when you gotta turn this way, that way, and it takes time for that bow to come around. Contour trolling with a tiller is very, very nice. Around this hump, I'm not gonna cut off that corner like I did before. It's coming up. You can see those contour lines coming up as well. Nice deep edge, perfect spot for a muskie to sit and wait for some bait to start pushing up. We're starting to get close to that whitefish spawn. Your whitefish spawn is about 44 to 42 degrees and they like to spawn at night so these the sundown periods are really really good. You guys can see I kind of lost that contour before so I'm going to cut this a little shorter and see if I can find this edge and not have to go so wide. I'm trying to keep the boat in at least 15 feet of water. My bait's close to the bottom but I don't always want it hitting bottom. You don't want to get snagged up, that takes time away from the fishing. So it's really fun to just literally drive around and see what the lake has to offer. This, this Auto Chart Live lets you see what's there and let give you an insight on what other people may not know is there because there's, there's no other technology that does this.